So 2020 was really the year of the great outdoors. Polaris certainly benefited from that. We saw it in last quarter's earnings results as well. I know you upped guidance, and yet the stock has sold off since then, in part because there does seem to be this debate uh, among investors about whether we're at peak recreation for stocks like yours. Uh, how do you see it? Is that actually the case, given the fact that we're coming into tougher comps for the year? Or do you see us in the midst of a fundamental shift in terms of consumer habits? Well, I think there's a fundamental shift. I mean, one of the things that we've tried to reiterate to uh, investors is, you know, when you look at our comps versus 2019, in the second quarter, we're still going to be up 20, 25 percent from a retail standpoint. And we expect the full year to be up that much. I think uh, a big part of what's happening with us from a stock perspective is the supply chain and logistics challenges that I think many are facing are obviously having a pretty heavy impact. Uh, for us, that's had uh, a direct impact on the amount of inventory that we have at dealers. It's down, you know, over 70 percent. And the feedback we're getting from our dealers is if they had more equipment, they could sell it. So by all measures, mm. uh, consumer demand for our products is still very hot. Yeah. You and I have had that conversation about supply chain snarls and the like in the past. I mean, it really dovetails into the great inflation debate we're having more broadly right now as well. How transitory do you think these supply chain bottlenecks are and the rise we've seen in, in input costs? Well, you know, the thing that I'm keeping an eye on is is the direct labor costs. That's something that we're working through right now. Um, but as it relates to things like logistics, you know, we added a surcharge to our products, and that is pretty indicative of the fact that we think that's going to be largely transitory. Uh, and I think the commodity cost increases are as well. There's just been a lack of supply, and I think as that supply comes online, that's going to naturally start to drive the uh, the prices down. And a lot of what we're contending with is paying things like expedited uh, freight because we can't get things through cargo uh, on the water. So we're, you know, air shipping and that's, you know, gone up threefold because there's a lot of folks that are going through and doing that. So it feels like there's a fair amount of this that'll subside once the supply chain right sizes itself. But, you know, time will tell. Can you find the workers you need right now? Uh, you know, it is challenging in a couple of the locations. Um, you know, I think it's a combination of what's going on with the unemployment benefits, but it's also a uh, red hot market. And uh, one thing we have going for us is we have very attractive pay and benefits and we have a very attractive business and the way we run our factories. So uh, I'm optimistic mm. the team will work through those issues. Let's talk trade for a second. I mean, President Biden is, is in Europe meeting with G7 leaders, has already signaled that we're going to likely see the end of these reciprocal tariffs that have been in place on goods, including the duties that have been levied on U.S. motorcycles that have been imported into Europe. I mean, your competitor, Harley Davidson, at least on the motorcycle side, really got all the attention, all the negative publicity back in 2018 when it said it was going to have to shift some production and final assembly of its motorcycles to Europe to deal with those tariffs. But Polaris also shifted production to Poland. Uh, how are you assessing the current tariff and trade environment? And if we do see a lifting of those duties, what does it mean for your company? Well, look, we had always had a plan to have manufacturing in Europe for our European uh, motorcycles. We were paying pretty high fees just to uh, ship the bikes uh, overseas. And so the plans that we had to manufacture in Poland, which we already had a facility that was doing off-road vehicles, we simply just accelerated that. Uh, and we also didn't make a big fanfare about it because it was really about being able to serve our local customers. The tariff impact for us for Europe is, is relatively small. The, the larger issue for us is the over $100 million that we're currently paying uh, related to the 301 tariffs with China. We're optimistic, uh, given what we've heard from the administration. We know that it's probably not going to be anytime soon uh, that those tariffs are lifted, but it feels like things are starting to move in the right direction. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.